Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, today's the day. We're gonna get we're gonna get the cows back together. We're gonna we're gonna get back to one herd. Cows are gonna start grazing. Honestly, the grass is probably it's probably 50% ready. Some areas are very tall. We're looking at eight to ten inches. Uh, others are still at that you know six inches or less phase. But I can't wait anymore. The area that I've got the individual cows is really starting to get beat up. Grass is growing enough over there that they keep regrazing it. So I know I'm doing some long-term damage. And then as you can see behind me, I've got the pears still in this front pasture and the grass is looking pretty good. Uh, they've been grazing on it for the last five or six days now. And uh, it's getting to the point that they're gonna start kind of going back and regrazing some of their favorite areas. I've already been seeing it. So I need to start running those electric wires and stripping them down this pasture uh, to kind of manage that regrazing. We have been consistently overcast, cold, cloudy, rainy. I don't even know how many, I think we're up to about five inches of rain in the last month. Of course, we have another inch of rain coming uh, early tomorrow morning. So. I really need to get the cows out of that smaller area in the pasture. It's always a, a balance this time of year with, you know, a lot of that bunch grass. We, we're pretty orchard grass dominant out here in some of these pastures. You know, they, they explode, they start growing. They're at 10 inches before any of the other grass is really even ready to be grazed. So it's always a race to try and get that stuff grazed down and stop it from going to boot stage and even putting on a seed head. Uh, trying to stop that but not grazing too early that those other grass species don't get set back for the remainder of the year so we're getting to that point you know I can always I can always tell we're getting there when I look out my window I look out off my deck uh, on a sunny day like this a sunny breezy day and you see the waving of the grass almost like like a body of water um, glistening in the sun that's kind of when I know we're getting to that point that that boot stage is going to be happening soon. So it's time to it's time to get a knock back on it. One of the other issues that I'm having to decide on is, you know, some producers have the strategy that they'll set their their wire, their grazing wire, so that calves can move underneath it. Calves can run around. They can do what they want. They can take some space from the herd. They don't really have to worry about keeping them in the confines of the grazing strip like the rest of the herd. The sooner I get those calves trained to the hot wire, the better. Especially when we get to our back two and a half acres and we get to the open four acre next door. That four acres we graze next door is actually only fenced on one side. It's open on three sides. So what I have done is, is lay out a double stack electric wire, one high, one low, to basically act as a perimeter fence. The last thing I want is to give the calves a month of grazing R2 home pastures where they're free to go underneath the wire and roam just to put them next door and have them do the same thing. And now they're open to the countryside. They could take off. Uh, the other issue that I got to think about that we're just going to see what happens is actually getting the herd back together re-establishing that pecking order. I actually did not anticipate, let's see if we can get both those girls in this shot. So uh, this is number two and number three and, and that's their numbers for a reason. That Dunn, that tan Dexter, she's number two. She's number three. And a herd as small as mine actually being number two comes with a lot of benefits. So they, number two and number three really fight for that rank in the herd. What I totally failed to remember is that even minor separation between these two leads to fighting, basically, reestablishment of that rank within the herd. So what happened was when number, I'm trying to get this right, when number two calved first, she was separated from the herd when she actually had her calf. I moved her uh, into this front two and a half acres and then ultimately into the barn uh, because of the weather, the really cold rainy weather we had. In that short amount of time, we're talking less than 24 hours, this was at a, probably about three o'clock. By eight o'clock in the morning the following day, number three here was getting ready to calf. And so she, uh, you know, I moved her out of that back pasture and got her up into the area by the barn where where number two was with her calf and they immediately started fighting head button pushing each other around it was really really muddy again because of the weather we've been having and uh it was getting kind of dangerous 
her calf was in the same area that they were fighting. Mm. Almost got crushed a couple of times. Um, not to mention number three was getting, I mean, she was within a few hours of calving. I think after that, she calved about two hours later. So that just turns into a stressful environment for that mom to then be giving birth. So what is, <laughs> last thing I wanna do is get the whole herd with the calves into a relatively small grazing strip just to have everyone start fighting again, trying to figure out who fits where. I don't think anyone's gonna challenge number one. She's been number one since the day she came out here. And I think I've seen her challenged once uh, since the establishment of the rank and that's it. So I don't, I don't anticipate, I don't anticipate people fight with number one, uh, but we'll just have to see. wrong again. I really didn't think anyone was going to make a push for uh, the number one spot, but what's up, buddy? I know. I know. I didn't anticipate this either. I'm gonna go into work tomorrow and be like, y'all see the fights yesterday? That was crazy stuff. They're gonna look at me like, what are you talking about? And then I'll explain it to them and they'll just make fun of me. Well, now they have an audience. What do you kids think? Picking up on some notes, how to fight. Destroying the pasture. Destroy the sod. I'm sure they're getting exhausted. They've been at it for a few hours now. I haven't seen these two fight a whole lot yet, amazingly. I thought for sure that uh, they'd already be pushing each other around. One heifer calf, one bull calf. But they also, they don't hang out together a whole lot either. Maybe once the whole herd gets back together. Got some dry stuff for her. She was starting to get pretty liquid out the back end. So that's obviously not good because not only is she not really gaining any weight, she's also probably losing some weight when that manure gets way too runny. So give her a chance to get all balanced out with some dry hay.
girl's all done, you still going. Ooh, she's getting pretty manure-y out the back end too. Um, we'll just try and get everyone together here. There you go. Let's just everyone figure it out. Come on, kids. Hey. So I don't think these two are done. They're still figuring it out. Uh, with the massive list of things that I have going on today, it's just going to be easier to turn them all into this pasture, give them the day to figure it out, um, decide who's who, who sits where, let them meet the calves, get that all out of the way on a nice spread out open area. Well, it's been about close to five hours now and everyone seems to be calming down. Um, everybody fought everyone, man. Uh, last year's calf was fighting. Uh, the red steer was fighting. One versus two, two versus three, three versus one, two versus one. Um, even the calves started pushing each other around. So <clears throat> I'm glad I, I'm glad I, uh, kind of just let them into this large area, let everyone figure everything out. This is actually the first time that's number one laying down up there. This is the first time she's laid down. And I'm not quite sure if she's number one anymore, to be honest with you. Uh, curious to see where this guy ends up. Like I said, he was number two in the herd. Um, but he also got ran off by, by, uh, that Dunn Dexter. So and she, like I said, she was fighting everyone too, uh, but she didn't, she didn't last long. She's pretty tiny still, so I think she's going to remain at the bottom of the totem pole. So yeah, busy day. I'm just going to leave them in here for the rest of the day. Let them rest, let them graze, whatever. Uh, see if we get any of that rain tonight. And then tomorrow I'll use those <coughs> range cubes, protein treats to get them up in that grazing strip. And then we'll officially be strip grazing for 2022. If you guys have any questions, comments, or caster remarks, anything like that, um, leave them in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. We're almost, again, we're almost at that 1,000 subscriber mark, which would be awesome. That'd be a nice little milestone to hit. Thumbs up if you liked the video, and we'll talk to you guys later. Well, as you guys might have seen, this area was really, really beat up from the cows hanging out here all winter. Got it all seeded down with some annual ryegrass from Green Cover Seed and took a bunch of old bedding, covered it all up. I also went through the pasture and this chunk of the pasture where the whole herd was at for the last couple months and fluffed up a lot of the hay piles that they didn't really get into. Obviously we don't want it too thick because then it'll choke out the grass, won't allow anything to grow except weeds. Uh, so just kind of fluffed up some of those really big hay piles, spread it all out, and ready to let this rest and recover. Cows won't be back on here for a long time, so should have plenty of opportunity to regrow, recover, fill in all of this really beat up area. Uh, the ryegrass is going to be great. Annual ryegrass is going to be great for compaction, which this whole area was just mud. Like I said, a lot of hoof traffic, so it'll help break up that compaction. It'll grow very very quickly and then when it dies at the end of the year it'll provide a lot of good uh, food for the soil microbes.